This chip has an insane amount of power and gaming potential, and in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into what it can do when it comes to PC gaming. This is the RK3588, and it's a chip that we've looked at a few times on this channel. When it comes to Android emulation, it has the ability to emulate PS2, GameCube, Wii, and Switch games, but a lot of the untapped potential that we haven't seen yet is locked away in Linux where we have way more tools available to see what it can really do. I started this video with a modest goal of getting a single PC game to run on this processor with a dream goal of getting the full Steam desktop client to run as well. I ended up going down a deep rabbit hole, like the deepest you've ever seen in the process, and I am shocked by what this can do. In order to understand the full significance of what I'm going to cover, I need to introduce a few technical concepts throughout this video, but I'm going to try and do it in a way that's entertaining and informative. The first thing that we need to cover is the processor itself. This thing comes in two different packages with an average price of around $40. This is an ARM processor, and it's the same kind of processor that's in your phone right now. These things are typically used for Android or iOS, but they can also run a full Linux desktop OS. Compared to the type of processors that are used in PCs, this thing is much smaller, uses less power, and essentially speaks a different language. Without translation of some kind, an ARM processor is not supposed to be able to run the exact same application that you can run on an x86 processor without the application being made specifically to run on ARM. Thankfully, we have a few options that can help us run those x86 applications and games on processors like this one. That's going to allow us to play older games with very good performance at very low power consumption. This processor can use around 10 watts of power at full tilt, but that power is shared between the CPU and GPU. Our CPU is equivalent to a Snapdragon 855, and without taking drivers into consideration, our GPU sits between an 845 and an 855. It actually benches significantly higher than an 855 in graphics. Unfortunately, drivers are everything, and good drivers are not something that we have right now. I don't know who's to blame for this, but the driver situation is not good. On Android, we have OpenGL ES 3.2 and Vulkan 1.2, but on Linux, we only have OpenGL ES 3.2, and if you look at it the wrong way, it will just simply not work. Thankfully, we have a solution to this problem, and it's what made this entire video possible. There's one final thing that you need to know before we can jump down this rabbit hole together. Before recently, you had two different ways that you could render 3D graphics in Linux using this processor. By default, you could use what is called a blob molly driver, and that's basically just a driver file that was made and is only distributed as a complete package. You do not have any code that you can use to change anything. So if something is broken or there's a missing feature, <laughs> Tough luck. Besides this, you could use something called LLVM pipe, which is software rendering. This is going to use your CPU to render stuff and it's a decent fallback option when the blob doesn't work. It gives you OpenGL 4.5 and OpenGL ES 3.2, but it uses a ton of CPU power and it gives way less performance than the blob. I have the GL Mark test running on the blob on one side of your screen and with LLVM pipe on the other with CPU graphs. We can still use software rendering to play some simple games, but we don't have a lot of headroom available for much else. Recently, we got a third option, which also performs less than the blob, but it's way more useful. I'm going to use this new driver for most of this video. Just be aware that everything you will see is not the final potential of this processor. So for this first section, we're gonna look at what the native gaming landscape looks like on this processor with the new Mesa Pan Fork driver. There are a lot of native ports to ARM Linux that you can play, but I just wanted to stick with things that I haven't looked at before. Our first game on the low end is Warcraft 2. As you would imagine, this thing runs without issue on this at 1080p resolution. I've enabled some graphs on the left side of the screen so you can see how things are performing. For our next game, we have a port of Half-Life 1. This is another easy title to run on this, and it runs at 100 FPS. I had to compile this, which was a little annoying due to outdated directions, but it works great, and it can run other games like Blue Shift if I want. There's another version of this port with a higher frame cap, but I couldn't get it to work. Right Morrowind is a super easy game to get set up if you already own it. I took my data files from Steam and installed Open Morrowind for this. The performance is pretty good with the settings I'm using right now. I maxed out the draw distance and turned off the water shader. Outdoors, we get anywhere from 40 to 90 FPS, and indoors or in caves, we can go up to 300. Our last native ARM game is Doom 3. 
At 1080p with maxed out settings, our FPS is between 30 to 60 depending on what is happening. We can increase our average by disabling shadows or by running the game at 720p. So that's just a small look at what we're working with when it comes to playing games that can run natively on this ARM processor. To be able to play more games and Steam itself, we need to use another application to help us run games that were made for PC. For this, we need to use Box86 to run 32-bit games, and we need Box64 to run modern 64-bit ones. This is another thing that requires compiling, but some operating systems do come with these both packaged together. Either of these will allow us to run PC Linux games and applications. Think something like the Linux Steam client or games that were natively ported to PC Linux. If we want to play Windows PC games, we need to use another application called Wine to bridge the gap between PC Linux and Windows. Box86 is an application that I've wanted to look at for over a year, but I never ended up doing it because it's such a daunting task if you don't have a lot of experience doing stuff like this. It's easy to get some stuff to run, and the performance is really good when the stars align, but the application has a really high skill ceiling, especially when you run into a situation where there's a game that might work, but for whatever reason, it doesn't, and you have to decipher from the error messages that spit out how to move forward. At this point, the Steam client isn't working for me, and I don't know why, but I will not give up. I am going to try and fix that while we look at some games that won't require Steam running in the background. Let's start with some PC Linux ports. These are games that run natively on PC Linux. Unfortunately, most of my games are locked behind Steam, but I do have a few non-DRM versions. Our first game is Freedom Planet. This isn't a demanding game by any means, but I was super happy when I got this to run because it was the first game that worked. Our next game is Steam World Heist. Also not a demanding game, but at least it runs. Another random Linux game that I had was Door Kickers, and thankfully, it just works. This last game has a native ARM port, but it's a good test case to use if you want to get Box86 going on your own phone or SBC because it's available for free straight from the website and it shouldn't give you any issues at all. Now let's throw Wine into the mix so we can start checking out Windows games. The first game that I want to run is Half-Life 1 because you've already seen how it runs when it's compiled natively for ARM. This game is capped at 60 FPS and it does have some audio issues that are not present in the other version that I played, but besides that, it is fine. Let's continue. Here's another title that runs well. This is Fable The Lost Chapters, and this one doesn't have any graphical issues or audio issues. It's probably worth pointing out that this is with the GPU locked at 1 GHz. By default, this game ran with a 300 MHz clock speed on the board that I'm using. Gothic 2 is another 3D game that runs on this hardware, but it does have audio issues on my current setup, and it does lag the first time you hit an enemy. This game is voice acted, and the audio cuts out after a minute or so of playing, so this game is a little annoying to play. There were a few games that I was looking forward to testing on this, and Warcraft 3 was one of them. It was a little annoying to get this installed. Reign of Chaos and the Frozen Throne both run with an average of 30 FPS and 900p resolution. The only issue is that the audio can cut out randomly, and the game needs to be restarted to fix it. Another game that has this problem is Tomb Raider The Angel of Darkness. This game required the use of a separate program to bypass the intro FMVs, but it runs well once the graphical settings are turned down. The audio cutting out is the only issue this game has. We have one final game before we are going to check back on the Steam situation. Here's Neverwinter Nights Diamond. This game runs a bit slower than I would expect based on the performance that we're getting from other games. It's very playable, but the resolution is set to 800p, and it has the same issues as the last few games. That's about as far as I could get without getting Steam access, and the program is spitting out a random error that other people are not having to deal with. So, I'm going to switch over to my Edge 2 and see if I can fix this error by simply just trying with another machine. This uses an RK3588S, but the performance should be the same. The only difference between these two is that the Edge 2 ships with Ubuntu 22.04 by default, whereas the 3588J needed to be manually updated from 20.04. Just to eliminate as many issues as possible, I'm starting this board out with a clean install of 22.04 server, and I'm only installing packages and apps that I need to get Steam working. After installing everything, I tested out a few games just to make sure that the apps were working. The Warcraft 2 and Half-Life 1 footage that you already saw came from this board. Anyway, after installing Steam, we are faced with a completely different error message compared to the other board. After posting the message that I got on GitHub, it turned out that there were two problems in play. The first problem was that there was a new update to Steam that implemented something in their login screen that is not implemented in Box86 or Box64. That is the biggest problem. 
The second problem is minor, and there are workarounds for it that I now know about, but my Linux kernel is missing a specific line of code that allows the system to know that it has the capability of opening PC applications. Essentially, all it does is tell the system what application it needs to use when it tries to open up something like this. That line of code is disabled on my Edge 2 and my Firefly board. In fact, it's disabled on every RK3588 and RK3588S product that I own. I have to do a huge shout out to the DuckStation developer Stensec for this and a lot of the other things that he helped out with because I never would have been able to finally get this video out the door. There are two solutions to that second problem. We can just change that single line of code and hope that the system will be able to use it, or we have to change that line of code and recompile the entire kernel that this board runs on. The first option is the easiest, but it doesn't work. So we have to go with the second. Just as a note, I am simplifying this entire thing a lot. I've never compiled a kernel in my life and I was fine with never doing it, but I was so close to finally getting the Steam client to run that I didn't want to give up. This Edge 2 board is pretty expensive for the hardware that's here, but thankfully this company has very good documentation on their website covering almost anything you could want to do, and they also have engineers that answer user questions on their forums regularly. I was able to find a topic from a person with a different product that wanted to do almost the same thing that I did, and I was able to find some of the missing commands that I needed to finish with the other software and documentation that they provide on GitHub. Long story short, I recompiled a kernel after fixing a bunch of compilation errors, and I enabled the support that I needed in order for the system to know that it can run PC applications. Unfortunately, the updated version of Box64 that was supposed to fix the login issue was in fact broken, and I verified this because two other people with different RK3588 boards also had the same issue. I can't tell you how disappointed I was at that moment because I was so close to being able to test out a lot more games and the Proton compatibility layer, but I just couldn't log in. I have a surprise though. Box86 and Box64 are not the only applications that you can use to run PC applications on ARM processors. There's another application, and that application doesn't have this login issue. This is where an application called FexMU comes into play, and this thing is a beast if you have the right hardware. I don't have the right hardware but I should have the right hardware to be able to just log into Steam. Like my bar for success is super low at this point. Anyway, I don't wanna mess around with my Edge 2 that I've already spent so much time trying to fix. So I decided to use a feature that's built into this board to dump my entire system and all of the work that I've done before using the same system to write that all back to another Edge 2 that I own. This is something that I haven't done before with this product, but it is an awesome feature. I could have done something like this with external rock chip tools, but it's much easier to be able to do this entire thing on the board itself. So I booted up the second Edge 2 and I installed FexMU. To my surprise, it logged into Steam without any problems. After all the BS that I went through to get to this point, I can't describe how awesome it felt to finally see this application loaded on a platform that is not supported by Valve. This program has one negative aspect to it, and it's the fact that it cannot use the blob driver or the pan fork driver without more work. That means you're left with LLVM pipe, which is why I explained the differences between all of these at the beginning of this video. The good thing about FexMU is that a lot of things are possible when you have good drivers and you have Steam Proton. Anyway, we need to start the Steam client with a command that will force it to use software rendering. After we do that, we can launch a game from the game list and these games are obviously not gonna run that fast, but we can make the rendering window smaller to make some games playable. This is Freedom Planet running at 240p resolution with some slowdown, and you'll notice that the CPU is really loaded right now. The good thing about our pan fork driver is that we have the source code, unlike the Molly blob. That means we can create a PC driver for this GPU, so we can use our G610 GPU as if it were on a desktop PC. Again, I am simplifying things here. Stensec came through and gave me the files that I needed for this. With these drivers, we can judge the performance difference between ARM Panfork drivers and PC drivers. There is a gap between them, but it isn't that bad. The only issue with all of this is that we do not have 32-bit PC drivers, and those older 32-bit Windows games are gonna be the ones that would run the best on this hardware. For those games, we're stuck with LLVM pipe. Anyway, let's take a look at what we can do with FEX and 64-bit x86 Panfork drivers. Our first game is Fez, and this runs without any sound issues or anything else. Torchlight 2 is another Steam game that runs with FEX, but it's a little slow. Still very playable. Terraria is another game that runs about the same. There's another way to get this to run better than this, but I couldn't get it to work. 
And our last Vex MU game is Bastion. This one runs way better than I was expecting. I looked at this game using Skyline, and this is by far the best version that I've tried on this board. So at this point, I finished my goal of getting the full Steam client to run, and I was able to test out a bunch of new games on this processor. Box64's only issue was that it couldn't log into Steam because it couldn't see the window. Since I've already entered Steam using Fex and I have my password saved, I had a hunch that I could now bypass that issue completely. To my surprise, Box64 worked without changing anything. Now we can do some real tests. We can test 32-bit and 64-bit games with our original ARM Panfork driver. This opens up a lot of doors. Most of these games are going to be bigger ones that I couldn't test before because I only own them on Steam. We have a bunch of games here, so I'm going to just provide some highlights for each one. Ziggurat at 720p very low has graphical issues, but it runs very well. The graphical issues that it has are pretty obvious. There's some corrupted textures, but the game is highly playable. I tried Terraria again at 800p, no frame skip, low quality, and it didn't run that well, but 1080p with frame skip, low quality, runs very well, much better than it did under FX. Stanley Parable runs at 720p with 60-ish FPS, but there is some slight stutter as we turn the camera around. He entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Serious Sam 3 needed to be changed so that way it would run on the high performance cores, and when I did that, the FPS went from 2 to 40. <laughs> Left 4 Dead 2 runs at 720p, but it's pretty easy to crash as you get into the game. Killing Floor 2 also runs at 720p with 20 to 40 FPS. When it comes to Dark Forces, I also need to manually change the CPU affinity, and once I did, the game runs, but it crashes pretty easily. To get Stardew Valley to run, I needed to force Proton Experimental, but after I did, 1080p runs very well. Now here's Portal 2. I didn't expect this game to run at all. This game uses DirectX on Vulkan, and we don't have Vulkan support on Linux, so we need to use something called Wine d 3 d to run DirectX on OpenGL. This game has high input lag, but it is playable. Borderlands 2 is not a game that I was expecting to work at all. I have made some deep INI tweaks to improve performance at 600p, but the improvement was much less than it would have been on a real PC. and we can't go any further without the meme game. Here's Crisis at 600p. I needed to use an older version of Proton to get this game to run, and it's not that fast, but it does work. I was a little hopeful that Tomb Raider would work, but at 600p the game looks cursed and the FPS is bad. For Far Cry, the menus were broken, so I couldn't change any of the settings. This could probably run at 1080p if I could see the menus and change some of the graphical options. The first version of Portal runs great at 1080p with no issues. When it comes to Skyrim, this is a bit strange because the game was running a lot better than this before I needed to film, but this is the best that I could get when I needed to start filming. To get this to work, I needed to use an older version of Proton. And our last game is Half-Life 2. This thing runs great at 1080p. I played this game a lot on this processor. Hey! You're Freeman, aren't you? We got word you were coming. You got here at a bad time. 
So yeah, that's PC gaming on the RK3588 processor using Box86 and FexMU. It's pretty awesome to see how many things we're able to run on this, and the best part about everything that you just saw is that none of it was done with good drivers. Synthetic benchmarks aren't everything, but if we went by one of them, this thing is running at half of its max performance. Even a 25% performance bump would be a game changer on this chip. This entire video has left me with the thought that Valve should just have a native ARM client. If we had that and ARM provided Vulkan Linux drivers for the crap GPUs they sell people, we could play thousands of games on something like this. An important thing to note is that almost everything that I did in this video is possible on an Android phone. So just let that sink in. If you like this video and you learned something new, leave a like, and don't forget to share your thoughts down below. Happy gaming, everyone. Taki out. Bonus Taki here. While I was editing this video, I actually got another RK3588 board. This is the NanoPi R6S, and it's the cheapest product that I own with this processor by a large amount. There was one game that I didn't get to test in the main video that I'm now going to show on this. This is Minecraft Java Edition. I probably don't have all of the optimizations installed correctly for this because I should get a bit better performance in this, but this is at 1080p with 12 chunks. If I lower it down to 8, we get a really big boost of performance. The wrapper that I'm using to be able to play Minecraft can actually be used to play other games like Doom 3, which also runs on this board. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video.